Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with another video and this time we're gonna be doing another set of Christmas nails. However, I've already done the pink set. I've done the blue Christmas, I've done coffin and stiletto. And so this time we're gonna be doing more of like a traditional look as far as the colors go. So I'm gonna be using my red acrylic green. I'm gonna be using some green glitter, some nude, uh, some bling and just, you know, a little razzle dazzle. So, um, yeah, so the practice hand that I'm using is my, I always butcher her name, y'all, but this is my Vera, Vita Bella, Vita Bella, and I'm so sorry, V, for butchering your name, but this is my practice hand from V. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you, a lot of you guys watch her, so um, I've definitely been loving the practice hand, 100%. Like, I have another one that I got, like, a few years ago, and it's so heavy to where it hurts my wrist the fingers aren't as flexible and i know yesterday i was watching like i've already used the practice hand but i was watching one of these videos on like do's do's and don'ts and like i know one thing that i said in my last video was that i like how flexible the fingers are and then she did mention like you're not supposed to like move them out the way because sometimes y'all like you know you're doing a set and you're either like something keep going wrong and so you get a little irritated and so that's been happening to me when i'm doing like a set to film and so i kind of just yank your finger up her my practice hands finger over and so i need to remember that just like i wouldn't do that to a client maybe but just like i wouldn't do that to a client you know i don't want to do that to my practice hand but of course overall i absolutely been loving my hand like i said super easy to use but um just like we would if we were doing a client i'm gonna go ahead and start with prepping the nail now um i already of course applied the nails and i do have a video on basically how to use your hand so i'll be sure to leave that link down below so you guys can go watch that video so that way if you have the practice hand you know exactly how to use it and how to take care of it as well because i probably should have followed better directions but the first thing that i'm doing is just going in with a 180 sending bend file at 8,000 RPMs and just like you would on a normal human client you just want to go in and just remove the shine from the natural nail you do want to make sure that while you're doing this that you don't of course file on the actual like cuticle area or like the silicone um, if you're using this practice hand but if you're working on a regular human client you want to make sure that of course you're only filing the natural nail and also that you're not using your your e-file at a speed that's too high because you don't want to cause friction um, and then it's gonna cause your client's nail to burn and trust me when I say it's definitely not a good feeling at all so make sure that you're really really careful so again I'm just using my e-file at 8,000 rpms if you need to adjust it and make it go a little bit slower, that is completely fine, depending on your level of experience when it comes to using an e file. After that, I'm gonna go in and just dust them off. And I'm gonna go in with my nail tips and I'm gonna be using my 3XL um, square nail tips, which are definitely like the perfect squared shape. And I'll show you guys. See, like they're literally perfect not too wide um they do have a slight curve but nothing major at all i know there's a lot of people that do like a deep c curve um but i typically don't i like mine straight so they don't have a curve to them um, but we're just gonna go in and apply them like you normally would on a client so i'm just using my kds glue to apply the nail tips and just like any other time when you're applying nail tips you want to make sure that the nail tip fit exactly from sidewall to sidewall you don't want it to be too big or too small because then you will get lifting or breakage so you definitely want to make sure that you're applying the perfect size tips and then also i do have these available in coffin these square ones and then a stiletto size or stiletto shape as well which i've already um did sets using those which is why i decided to do square this time and then also the glue that i'm using dries really really fast um, so I'm able to work 
pretty quickly when I'm doing this. Alrighty, so all of the nail tips are on. This is what they look like. Again, definitely that perfect um, squared shape. Okay, up next, we're gonna go back in with the e-file. And I forgot to mention, but I am using my Melody Susie e-file. I do have a video of doing um, of me doing an unboxing and reviewing on this drill so I'll be sure to leave the link down below so you guys can go check it out um, but I am using it at 9,000 rpms and what I'm doing is just going in and blending that nail tip right in the middle that way whenever we apply the acrylic everything is nice and even and you don't get that little lump right here in the middle um, I typically also always do this on my clients um, even if I I like want to go in or a lot of the time I kind of go in with just a regular hand file um, but of course with the e-file it does save you a little bit of time just because you're able to work a little bit faster but you're, if you're a beginner and you still don't feel too comfortable using an e-file you can do all of the work with just a hand file now I will say that it does take a little bit longer and then it also takes or it's just a lot of work on your wrist um, so you just kind of want to work smarter and not harder so once we prepped or yeah once we apply the nails and everything is nice and prep we're just gonna go in and dust them off and usually I would have my little like my other brush which would get the dust off the silicone hand really good but I don't know where it's at so we're just gonna go in and apply a primer and dehydrator and you want to go in with the dehydrator first this is just gonna get rid of any of those oils that are on the natural nail now I'm going in with a primer and this is just gonna help the acrylic adhere a lot better to the nail that way we don't get any lifting and I know you guys have heard me say different things when it comes to lifting and the reason why I just basically stress that is because just remember that lifting does not just come from one thing like it literally can come from not prepping the nail correctly which a lot of the time that's what it is or from not using the correct liquid to powder ratio or not following the nails correctly so you definitely always want to keep that in mind I know a lot I get a lot of messages asking like you know like hey I'm getting lifting like what could it be um, doing everything right but like I said a lot of the time it just could be a number of things so you just really have to go in and do like a process of elimination so you figure out like what exactly is going wrong but um, to create this set I'm gonna be using the color money green and hot topic from my new collection um, I'm also gonna be using some green glitter these are also available on my website and I'm gonna be using the color real nude as well which is a beautiful um, nude core acrylic so um, also I'm gonna be using my monomer I do have these available on the website now I know a lot of people were asking about it I'm also going to be using my number 14 acrylic brush. These brushes will be available on my website at the beginning of the year. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. So just pouring my um, monomer into my Depen dish. And then I'm going to go in with my odor out drops. Now I do have these in a peach scent. And then I actually just got a new scent which is Roses. They both smell really really good. But I do want to say that this does not get rid of the smell. What it does is it basically just gives the monomer, um, the monomer a more pleasant smell. So instead of smelling like really strong chemical. It's going to just smell like peaches or roses. Um, and like I said, I do have another peach one is on there for sure, but the uh, rose one will go on there soon. I literally just got it today. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go in with my nude acrylic first. Um, again, that one is in the shade Real Nude. And I'm gonna be applying that on the ring finger and y'all like I oh it's raining hard but um I'm just gonna kind of wing it like I said these are the colors that I wanted to use for this for today's set I don't really have something in particular in mind 
so we're just gonna see what I come up with so I'm just going in with the nude acrylic I do want to mention that these acrylic are definitely beginner friendly because they don't dry too fast or too slow so it gives you enough time to kind of just play with it and just get it really nice and smooth and yeah so definitely perfect um, if you're a beginner or I mean any level of you know any level literally but I know that there's a lot of products out there that are meant for basically professionals and so they dry a little bit faster and so if you're a beginner it may be a little bit hard to work with other products not mine don't want to confuse you guys so my next bead I'm placing below that first one same thing patting and then brushing towards the tip now I do know that there are of course a lot of people out there oh y'all please just this is just a reminder that if you're gonna do glitter on the nails and then you're gonna do some solid colors remember to always do the glitter nails last because if not that glitter is literally gonna be everywhere so just keep that in mind when you when you're working with glitters so Oh, but what I was going to say is that I do a padding when I'm working, I, I do a padding and a dragging motion. Um, but whatever you feel more comfortable using is completely fine. But when I'm working, as you guys can see, I use a four bead method. So just placing my first one right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet. Placing my second one below that first one and then third one closer to the cuticle area. And then fourth one um, right below that third one. So this was my third one. Of course cleaning around the cuticle area really good. That way you don't get any product on the cuticle. Making sure that also as you're working, you're brushing that product up. And this one, I probably applied it a little too small. Alrighty, so my fourth bead, I'm going to apply it right around this area. And then this one is, go is what's going to build our apex. And then also I'm going to brush it all the way down towards the tip. That way everything is nice and even. But like I said, this is mainly going to just build our apex. Alrighty, so everything is nice and smooth and like I said I did my four ball method but however I always tell you guys that if you've done like the four ball method and you feel like you need to add a little bit more acrylic somewhere feel free to do so so I'm gonna go in and apply a little bit more at the tip you guys can see how it's a little bit thin so I'm just gonna go in with a medium sized bead and I'm just gonna apply it at the tip to just give it a little bit more thickness because if I was to leave it like that, it would break off. And um, as I mentioned, this nude acrylic or the real nude acrylic is a core color. So you don't have to encapsulate this one. You can just use it by itself. Alrighty, so for the middle finger, I think I'm going to end up doing just nude as well. Or no, I think I'm going to do the index finger. So I'm going to do the same thing on the index finger. So um, this time, instead of doing my first bead in the middle, I'm going to do it closer to the tip since my last nail was a little bit thicker at the tip. So that way, this time I can just build the thickness first at the tip um, since, since these nails are a lot longer than what I usually do. Alrighty, so my second bead, I'm going to place it behind that first one or, or basically above the first one. 
same thing just patting very gently remember that when you're working y'all you want to be super super gentle because if you're brushing too hard you're literally going to just be brushing the acrylic off the nail when you're really gentle you're able to keep your product exactly where you want it so definitely keep that in mind when you're working and y'all literally i have not even started using my glitter and there's already glitter everywhere from me just opening the lid to that glitter so next we're gonna go in and just place my third bead closer to the cuticle area and as you guys can see i'm working with like medium sized beads so not too much and not too little i know there's people out there that love doing like a one bead method or they just work with a lot of product at a time but even though i've been doing nails for a while i like to just work with the amount of product that i can control and i definitely always recommend that to people when they're beginners um because they see people going in with like really large beads but a lot of the time you have to just keep in mind that they've been doing nails for a while or most likely they have and so they know how to control their product if you try it and you just started doing nails most likely that product is going to run all over the place and you're going to end up with literally a mess so make sure that you're careful and just like i said work with a little bit at a time and then as you get more practice you'll be able to start working with larger beads Alrighty, so just like that and then my fourth bead, I'm going to place it closer to the cuticle as well. Making sure it's nice and neat. So just placing it as close as I can to the cuticle, but not to where it's on the actual skin and then just very gently pushing it up. And then quickly cleaning around that cuticle area and brushing to blend it in with what we already have. Alrighty, so just like that, everything is nice and smooth. And so next, I think I want to do, I know for the pinky, I for sure want to do a green nail. So I'm going to go in with just the green. Again, this one is in the shade Money Green. Super pretty. And they're also like, they're all really, really pigmented. Now typically if I was doing this on a client, I would go in with a thin layer of clear. That way next time she comes in, if she wanted something different, then I would just go in and file it down to the clear. But since we're using my friend here, I probably should give her a name. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think I should name her and we'll just give her a name. I'll let y'all name her. So give me a name and that way I can start stop calling her a practice hand and we can actually give my really good practice hand a name. So just going in, making sure that I have a good coverage. Even just that first bead y'all gave us a perfect coverage. Um, just probably could have went in with a slightly bigger bead. So just going in with a little bit more around this cuticle area. Cutting it to where it goes as close as it can to the cuticle and then just brushing it down. So now I'm just going in with the clear and I'm just going to do a coat. Ooh. Hold on, y'all. I'm just going to go in with a layer over the entire nail. Now, I definitely did use too much liquid. Um, I accidentally did not wipe my brush off after I dipped it in the, into the monomer and I dipped it right into the um, polymer. So that created a mess, as you guys seen. But you just when that happens or if that ever happens, you just want to make sure you work really, really fast to get it off the skin and just get control of it.
for the um, middle finger, I do want to go in with a red. So I'm just going in, y'all look at how beautiful that is. So just going in with the color Hot Topic. Y'all look at that coverage. It goes on literally like butter. Going in with another bead. Get it as close as I can to that cuticle area. Same thing, just very gently patting down and then brushing down. Placing my next bead closer to the cuticle area. Alrighty, so just like that. And then for the thumb, I think I do want to do the glitter. So I'm just going to be using my green glitter. Definitely super, super pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and do a layer of clear first. That way, since... um. And the reason why I'm doing a layer of clear first is because since I am using loose glitter, I basically just want to have something for the acrylic to stick to once I go in and apply it. So just doing a thin layer over the entire nail. And I think, yeah, I think I want to just do it over. I was thinking of doing like an ombre, but I think... Oh shit. Or I may do like uh, to where I leave the tip clear. So what I'm going to do since like I said this is a loose glitter. I'm going to go in with my clear. And so I'm going to dip my brush into my clear. Get a bead of the acrylic. And then just dip my brush into the glitter. Just like that. And then place it on the nail. As you guys can see, the glitter is still loose. And so once I place it on the nail, it sticks right on there. And then since we picked up that bead of acrylic at first, it basically creates like a, a colored acrylic or not colored acrylic, but glitter acrylic. And so we're able to go in and just move it around as we please. I thought of doing, y'all yeah, don't know what I was thinking. I was, I said I was going to do the tip clear, but as soon as I placed it, like I forgot. So maybe we will do an ombre. Or not, I think I just want to do the whole nail glitter. I think that's what I'm going to do. So getting another bead of the clear, dipping it into my glitter. And y'all, y'all see how like it's so messy, especially with it being a loose glitter. It's so messy. Just going in, spreading it out. And then this one, of course, depending on how much glitter you get, you could make it a little bit more translucent or if you want a fuller coverage, that is completely fine as well. Okay, so it's looking good. I just want to do 
more around that cuticle area. Going in, of course, with just a little bit because I don't need too much. Alrighty y'all, so this is what the nails look like after the acrylic application. Really nice and smooth. Of course we have the little rough edges, but we'll get that taken care of once we do the filing part. So um, to file the nails or to shape them up, I'm going to be using my Get Nail 32 8080 hand file. Of course, these are available on my website and I absolutely love them. So this one is still not dry since I did go in and add a little bit more product. So we're going to go ahead and start with this one. Now, as you guys can see, they're already that square shape that we want. We just want to go in and get rid of those rough edges and just perfect the shape overall. So holding my file at exactly a 90 degree angle, you don't want to hold it like this because then you're going to be filing the corner off and it's not going to be squared anymore. It's going to turn into a rounded shape. So again, hold it exactly at a 90 degree angle and just file back and forth. And then also to get the rough edges, I will lean my like my hand file in a little bit but still holding it right against that nail. Same thing on the other side. And then of course, since they're already a really nice squared shape, we really don't have to do too much filing, which is good um, because there's some extra 3XL nail tips out there that you still have to go in and do a bit of work. And then of course, if your acrylic is not nice and even, then you will have to do more filing. So that's why you wanna always work smarter and not harder. So at the free edge, same thing except for instead of holding my file horizontally, I'm going to hold it vertically against the nail. Make sure that I hold my practice hand finger or yeah, finger um, at the top and then also the bottom and then I also hold the nail right below. That way the nail isn't just kind of wobbling all over the place but it has some stability because if I, if I was to just go in there like this y'all like I wouldn't be doing anything. So make sure that you're holding it nice and tight. Same thing if you were doing a client and just making sure that as you're falling you're looking to make sure that you're basically getting the shape that you want and then also make sure that you're holding the finger really nice and straight that way you get a really straight shape because if you're holding it lopsided then guess what your nail's going to end up lopsided so make sure that you pay attention. Just like that, you can definitely see a major difference before and after shaping. And like I said, it didn't take much work at all. So you want to make sure that you always use a good file to shape. And then also just making sure that you don't apply your acrylic too thick because then you're going to end up having to do a lot of filing. So same thing for the rest. Just going in, filing at exactly that 90 degree angle against the nail. Go in and get those little rough edges from the bottom. And then filing that free edge. Alrighty, so just like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do the same thing on all of them. Alrighty, so just like that, we literally have a perfect squared shape. So next we're going to go in and do filing with the e-file. Now, as you guys can see, for the most part, the nails are all nice and smooth. 
we don't have any major like lumps or bumps i know this one probably could be fall down of course on the sides um, but i'm just going to go in and just demonstrate how i would do that so i'm going to go back in with my e-file and lately whenever i'm doing my my falling i just been using my 180 sanding bin and it works perfect um also you know with even like with not getting lifting like i'm still like pretty good um so i'm just gonna go in and go around the cuticle area going from the right side hold on yeah Okay, so going from the right side all the way over to the left side. And then just following the rest of the nail. And of course, hold on. Making sure that you follow those sides down as well. That way you don't have like those big walls on the side. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. But to where like it literally looks like a wall like you want everything to be really well blended okay so we're gonna go ahead and do that on all of them so same thing going from the right side all the way over to the left side around that cuticle area and then just following the rest of the nail So after we finish doing all of the filing with the e-file, we're going to go in with the buffer. And this is just going to get rid of all of those scratches left on the nail from the hand file and the e-file. So you want to make sure that we just go in and buff those nails really, really good. And I always buff towards the free edge. That way, like I said, everything is nice and smooth. And then, of course, holding my practice hands finger and the nail as well. And you want to make sure that you really do that when you're doing a client. And if then, I mean, really anytime, but if the nails are really long as well, like it's super important that way the nail isn't just kind of wobbling all over the place. And, you know, that way you don't hurt them. Alrighty, so I did all of the buffing and falling and all that good stuff. So now I'm going to go in and just wash my hand off. As you guys can see, it's super, super dusty. So I'm just going to wash it off and just brush all of that dust off. And then we'll move on to the nail art part. Alrighty, so now for the fun part, which is the nail art, uh, I'm going to be doing some white, like, little swirl, and I did this, like, the one that I'm going to be doing, I did on my pink set, I think, or my blue set, but my camera went dead and I didn't get to film it, so I do want to do it again, um, just because a lot of people really, really like that nail, so I'm going to be going in with a top coat first. Alrighty, so I'm going to go in with my no wipe top coat, and I'm going to do that on the pinky, and I'm pretty sure the design that I'm going to be doing, you guys have seen before because it's really popular simply because it's absolutely beautiful so i'm just gonna go in and do a coat of my top coat as you guys can see that green is absolutely beautiful that coverage was flawless and just the color and the application and everything was absolutely stunning so just doing a coat on that one i'm gonna go ahead and carry it i am also gonna be using some chrome on top of the green nail so once the top coat is com completely cured i'm gonna go in with my green chrome and with this one you do have to go in and basically get the powder from like inside the little tube so that's why I'm steady putting it in there and then just rub. I'm, I'm going to use my matte top coat, which these you can buy individually on my website. So just doing the matte. Y'all look how pretty that is. 
so after it's been cured that is what it looks like and so now I'm gonna go in with my white gel polish again this one is a part of my essential collection I'm gonna be using my nail art brush which these will be available really really soon it's gonna come with a set of five brushes the one I'm looking for is not in here nope so let's see oh there we go so I'm gonna be using my longest one which is my 20 millimeters Alrighty, so after I cured, I'm gonna go in with my brush and just dust it off. And we're left with a really pretty nail. So I am gonna go in and add some bling towards the end, um, but I absolutely love the chrome and then with the white glitter, it's really pretty. So um, next, I'm gonna, I feel like I wanted to do like a a sweater nail and I was thinking about doing that on the red but I kind of changed my mind um, but we'll see so for now I am gonna go in and attempt to do that 3d art that I was talking about I'm kind of nervous y'all because it's been a little bit since I last tried it so alrighty now for the ring finger I'm gonna be doing a 3d flower so I'm going in with my top coat and then after that I'm going in with the acrylic money green just doing my little petal this is my number two acrylic or 3d nail art brush from Amazon I'll be sure to leave the link down below so I'm doing the green petals first and then I'm gonna go in with the red and y'all I don't know what it is about every time I do 3d art like literally my camera stops recording like it just won't let me be great but I did the petals and then with a cuticle pusher I went in and created those little indentations and then I added some gold caviar but up next I'm gonna go in and just do a white fringe tip on this index finger and then I'm gonna go in and kind of do like some little um, Christmas lights on this one so just outlining the smile line and then I'm gonna go in with different color rhinestones I'm gonna do red green and gold to create those little Christmas lights Alrighty, and then for the middle finger, I did a top coat and then I'm going in with the emerald green and red stones and I'm just applying those down the middle of the nail and then I'm also going to go in and do some gold caviar. Um, of course, I'm using my hard gel to apply the bling and then I'm also using my wax pencil to pick up those stones. So after this, I'm going to go ahead and just do my top coat on the rest of the nails and that's going to be pretty much it. Alrighty, y'all. So here is the final look. They turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm loving the color combination. Definitely super traditional. And my flower turned out a lot better than expected. So as always, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.